All right, everyone, this is a special meeting. River Board of Finance. Uh, Laurie sent out a uh, an agenda. We are constrained in some ways by that uh, agenda, but the agenda certainly talks uh, is intended to give us the ability to talk about the budget. Um, the principal purpose, the first thing I would like to get to is uh, people have been sending us correspondence, which we will say is part of what uh, what the citizens are telling us, and we heard on, uh, on Tuesday night. With that introduction, I'm going to have Laurie, and we just agreed a moment ago, she will read each one of the uh, emails okay. that we have received. Okay, bear with me for just one second. I'm just trying to put our names as being in attendance. Okay, um, so John is the only one that's not here right now. I'm here. John's here. I thought oh, John said he was here. Yes, I thought we had a here. Okay, sorry. I just put your name back in. And let me see, Jim and Dwayne, you're both here. Okay, so the correspondences, and let me just open them up. <clears throat> we received letters from Jonathan Lambert asking, is there a long-term plan to fund town vehicles moving forward? This is not just directed at the purchase of a fire truck, although that is the extreme importance to me. Last year, it seemed poor planning to lead to lead, led the town to push off a, a purchasing fire truck due to inadequate planning for the town plow truck. Vehicles for our town are infrastructure and need to be prepared for. The fire department will have at least two more trucks that will need to be replaced in the near future. I'm sure the constables will need their vehicles replaced it's supposed to be in the next five years, as well as some of the town trucks. I would like to know the town's plan to fund vehicles in future budgets. I did respond back to that in part saying that we do have a five-year capital plan, which typically is presented at the annual town meeting, um, and that we would take his, you know, I'll be, I'd be bringing that to everybody. The next one is from Dorothy Michaels, <clears throat> excuse me, Michael DeMichael. In regards to the budget meeting this week, I would like to add that I don't want to see an increase on our mill rate. People are out of jobs and with the economy the way it is going, times are not going to get easier for people. Most of our stores on Main Street have not had any business. Working at the pet store for the past two years, I am seeing a trend of people watching their spending. This isn't going to change for some time. Even if the town is going to give a small break on interest for late payments, it isn't going to help most people that need financial aid. Parks can wait to be adding new equipment. Since we need to social distance, the kid won't need new equipment. Just take away the old equipment. The town will most likely cancel the muster, which will save money on cost of patrolling that weekend and I am sure other cuts can be made to lower our town expenses. On this note, I would like to say that I would vote no to a mill rate increase. I do agree a new fire truck is needed. And I, again, I thanked her for that. Okay, next one <clears throat> is from Lisa Bibiani. Thank you, Board of Finance, for all of your hard work to try to come up with a balanced budget with high hopes that it won't end up in over expenditures and trying to keep the mill rate low. I applaud your efforts as I am sure most of the residents appreciate that as well. But it seems that this repeated system that has been done for many years always ends up creating an expenditure shortage. Deep River seems to be stuck without being able to create extra tax base. So the only solution is to raise the mill rate. It may not be popular, but what if this pandemic doesn't magically go away and does have a relapse? We need to plan. We need to plan. Okay, who's got the fire truck going? Um, we need to put money into our daily, excuse me, into our rainy day fund and not take it out. Maybe we need to use the TAN, T-A-N, um, loan program to help out. We definitely need to put back in the fire truck and stop making that an expendable item because it is an easy cut. 
Making these difficult decisions now will hopefully lessen the blow next year. Maybe next year we will have a new revenue added to our tax base. We definitely need to push for economic growth. It's been years since we had available storefronts for rent on our main street. Currently, we have, I think, five available. We need to offer tax abatements to new business owners to get them to invest in our town. Thank you again. Um, Michael Wayne sent two notes, both on the same. The first is, with this COVID-19 virus having shut down our schools, this new budget, if passed, will give District 4 a windfall with taxpayers' monies, whereas many have lost their jobs or are living on Social Security whom were already having a tough time paying their bills. District four teachers and unnecessary staff should be on unemployment, no buses for transportation, savings on heating and air conditioning, um, the schools, no food purchases for in-school lunches, no children. Oil tanks should be full with cheap oil prices from funds already on hand. No transportation for special needs students at this time and more, I'm sure. Their proposed budget needs to be cut. Please don't give them a windfall at our expense. I responded to him um, to say, uh, come on, open up. I'm just trying to open up my response. Um, I responded that all, unfortunately, many of the items you listed are contractual, whether we use them or not, such as transportation. The teachers are teaching uh, virtually, but there are no substitute teachers, so a potential savings there, as well as with electricity use, for instance. Their budget is based on needs for a full year and not a partial school year as this is. And the R4 budget was voted on in April. I thank you for your comments. So that was my reply to him on that one. Um, and then he sent a second additional note. There will be no trips, especially out of the country this year with this virus, and they cost us all considerable tax dollars, and I believe included in the District 4 budget. No one knows when or if the schools will reopen this year. I just said thank you for that, um, since I had already replied. <clears throat> there was another one from Bill Cohen. I appreciate the fire department and all that they do. As a taxpayer of Deep River, I feel that the town cannot afford a new fire truck at this time. With the financial difficulties ahead because of the virus, it would be smart to wait. Um, he just got a straight thank you. Let me see. Um, one more just came in. All right, this one is from is the excerpt that uh, Jim sent to us, forwarded from Bill. Um, he expressed his concern that the fire truck and the budget, this didn't surprise me, but he did mention a couple of things regards the status of the truck. These items have never been discussed at any of the meetings I have attended, either in person or Zoom. Why these, I, these items were not mentioned by the chief or fire commissioners, I don't know, but I said I'd relay his concerns to all of you. Um, not sure if he can attend. So this is the letter from uh, Bob Raymond, firefighter and chief over many years. Uh, <coughs> is on tonight for your information. He was oh, okay, able, good. He was able to do the technology. I see his. I see his face. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So one large diameter pipe from the pump to the rear discharge was capped off because of a serious leak in corrosive corroded threads. The most cost-effective remedy was done by capping it unusable, leading, limiting the distribution of water to any first-in-line attack engine. This was done as a calculated risk due to the age of the engine slash pumper done two years ago. Also, the main rear main axle seal let go while running down the road. The chief engineer noticed smoke and odor emitted from the rear wheel and immediately took the engine out of surf service for repair, approximately 4,000 in cost. The engine looks, in quotes, good, but it is has become a money pit with repairs beyond annual service. It has outlived its reliability to for Deep River Fire Department and the property owners and residents of, the town, of Deep River and its mutual aid neighbors. 
To add to the seal failure, this caused differential lubricant to travel to the brake drums, causing the rear brakes to fail. This could have been a catastrophe to the safety of our volunteer occupants or innocent people. <clears throat> may or may not be the same issue, but Waterbury lost several firefighters due to brake failure on, um, entourage to an emergency. Um, so that one, Jim, you already took care of. I can't, I don't, I did not respond to him since I didn't have his email there. Um, there was one more. This is from John Kennedy. Um, please add this to the public comment. Our Connecticut Secretary of State, Denise Merrill, will now send out forms to all registered voters to request absentee ballots for the primary election in August and the general election in November with return postage paid. Finally, not just throwing our hands up and our hands up and doing away with representative government. Now we need to extend this absentee voting method to voting on our own town budgets. Do that now. Um, I, as my understanding is, we're under the state's ex, uh, mandates that, or executive order, whatever you want to call it, that we have to vote this way. We're not allowed the freedom to decide what we want to send out voter ballots. I, my understanding is we have to do it. Angus, you said you had gotten had looked into this a little bit, but before you respond, there was well, we, one more. We addressed, um, we addressed this Tuesday night at our, uh, this was the same letter that he sent the Tuesday night's meeting. We answered it then, I'll answer it now. I think everybody here was there at Tuesday, but you know, the executive orders don't give us any choice in this. Um, and that's very clear to a point that they issued a third executive order just last week, uh, seven HH said that, that it, it sets this in stone. This is the law of the state right now, and this is how Deep River is going to act. And I don't disagree. I don't like it, but I don't disagree that we have to put public safety um, first. No, I mean, this is our hands are tied. This is what we have to do. Um, <coughs> or is that your correspondence? That's it for correspondence. Um, Russ, you, you said. Much. Has anybody else heard anything? Has anybody gotten any phone calls? No. Heard from anybody? I, oh, I've, um, I, I got one additional phone call from um, Richie Naggett out in, in uh, Winthrop, and uh, he was very supportive of the fire truck. He said even though he's on fixed income, retired, Social Security and whatnot, he, uh, he, he backed the fire truck. That was a phone call that I had at the beginning of the week. <coughs> All right. Very good. I received a bunch of phone calls. Okay. I would suggest it was 50 50. A lot of people are very afraid of raising taxes. A lot right. of people are in favor of the fire truck. Um, let's move forward. Um, Board of Finance, we have been meeting weekly since March. Many of these, uh, many of the items that were raised in these. Uh, emails and that were raised on Tuesday night are the same issues that we have been discussing and uh, that are continuing to divide us. Although uh, I, do, uh, I, I do find that Jim Olson's uh, information to be new information, but where I wish to go so we can focus our time. Did anyone on the Board of Finance hear anything at the public hearing or in the following emails that would encourage them to change the vote on the level of expense that they proved at the April Board of Finance meeting. And uh, I'd like this to be a very brief poll. I'm going to ask each one of them to say something catchy like yes or no. <laughs> Carmela, because you are the first letter of the <coughs> are you are you uh, can you are happy with what you voted on? Would you consider changing anything? I am happy with what I voted on and I'm voting out of what I feel is my conscience. We have approximately 100 unemployed people in Deep River, it's approximately 4% of our people. The skim payments are up. People who have insurance are going to have a total, I think of about four months unemployment. Once that's done, they're out of money coming into their homes. So. No, I'm not changing my vote. I think that the fire, I voted for the fire truck. 
I think they need a fire truck, but I think it's something that can wait one more year. And as to trucks to respond, other towns come to help our fire department. So I don't think it's a desperate dying need that we have to have right now. I think it can wait until our economy improves. And, and uh, so your answer is yes. Uh, Bill, I'm going to turn to you again. You are is an alphabetical. Um, <coughs> Miller gave uh, us discussion. Are you yeah, yes or no? Do you see any reason to change your vote? <clears throat> no, I, uh, I'm part of the same way I voted before. I do have one question, though, and that is, of course, uh, Jim Olson's letter mentioning this big pipe that's been uh, welded off and you know, not being used anymore, which is probably a big deal for this truck. Was that included when they looked for the grant for the new truck? And if it wasn't included, why not? Because that, to me, it looks like a big deal for this truck. Maybe one of the, the fire chief or, or one of the firemen could comment on that. I, I don't know for certain whether it was, but I don't believe that it was. I think the, the stronger argument that we had, and I would have liked to have known this when we were filling this out, but um, I think that the fire department worked with the grant writer to put together what the, uh, what the grant said expressed as a need and um i don't know if that was in there or not well uh, all right it should have been neither it here should or have there. been it absolutely uh, should have been absolutely it, should have it, been you, know, you combine that with the with the the age was really just at the limit of when um when they wanted to start funding trucks it was not um it was it was on the actually on the young side of trucks that, the, that fema wants to fund but the um the open cab was the was the thing that that I thought was going to push it through, and that's what the grant um, agency thought it was going to push it through. But in the end, it did not fight based on the number of times it was being used. And I thought the issue was that the truck wasn't used enough to for, to allow the grant. That's what, that's what was expressed to me. I, I, didn't go out to, I don't want to cut anybody off. We've, we've been talking about these same issues in terms of other than with Jim the last three months. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I'd like to resist doing them again. Just, yep, thank you. I've got two right. people aren't going are not going to change their vote from the April board meeting. This brings us to Laurie. Do you have any changes you would like to make to the uh, to your vote on April the twenty eighth? No. While I I do feel that we need to um, maintain the infrastructure, maintain a line in the budget for funding for town vehicles, and I say vehicles plural, not just the fire truck, but all town vehicles. So I would be in favor of putting money in for vehicle or capital expenditure funding in that manner. Um, my vote doesn't change either okay. from where we were. Russell, that brings us to you. Uh, thanks, bud. Um, <laughs> Uh, fighting an uphill battle isn't isn't a fun thing. I, I've been a proponent of uh, getting the truck, you know, right along, um, but I'm not going, you know, and I wouldn't change that. Um, so that the budget that we had and that we voted on on our at our Tuesday meeting, I, I I'm fine with that. And um, some of the comments that came from the citizens, I thought were were quite excellent and uh, heartfelt. And um, I did check a couple of things to make sure we were on track. And as far as I know, I think we are. Uh, in regard to um, thinking about what we will bring in and thinking about what we'll spend. And I, I think this budget is as on track as we can get in these very unprecedented times. So no, I don't have any changes. John, this brings us to you. Do you have, uh, have you heard or encountered anything that would cause you to change your vote from the April meeting? Is anyone here, John? I do. Is that me? Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure you said, said my name. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, um, I'm good with keeping the expenditure level where it is. Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty and I don't think it's a good time to pour gas on the fire. I'm supportive of a fire truck. I'm supportive of a firehouse, but under the right financial circumstances when the town can afford to do it. So that's my position. 
There's a problem. I, uh, I, 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 well, I do generally do not vote. I do not depend on changing my vote either, but uh, it, would, uh, it is the same dollar amount that we sent to the town for a public hearing that we'll, uh, that we will probably will send to uh, the town meeting. Um, let's, uh, there were a couple of things that I heard. Uh, one Lisa brought up that I would, I would like to at least get people to think about. Uh, her point was that we may be too aggressive in some of our revenue assumptions. Uh, and the particular one was the uh, supplemental uh, motor vehicle. Um, Angus and I met in early February which uh, seems like a lifetime ago, uh, early February, and put to quite a bit of diligence in due diligence in the revenue. Our intention was that uh, due diligence had not been done for quite some time. And we wanted to make sure that we were using conservative numbers. We are using supplementary motor vehicles of $110,000. This year, we actually received 118. When Angus and I were working on it the prior year, we received 184. Just to make sure everyone defines uh, supplemental the same way, um, we have assessment year, which begins in uh, September. No, begins in October, ends in September. The uh, tax, <coughs> the tax grant list we're using, ended in September 30th of last year. Okay, 20. Um, any motor vehicles that were acquired or uh, or sold away will get an adjustment uh, during the taxable year. <coughs> Lisa has raised the issue that uh, um, with the current uh, pandemic, people may not be buying cars, which seems to make a lot of sense. Does anyone think 110 is too aggressive? I and and, and, what, and I do mean to answer that question. I will suggest to you, I find it okay. Um, people didn't stop probably, probably buying cars until March, so. The, uh, the 110 reflects um, anything through October, December, January, February, and then we get mysterious. So I seem, I think I'm okay with the 110, unless anyone thinks we should go down in that assumption, which obviously raises the uh, need for, which obviously increases the shortfall. Anybody have any thoughts? So you're saying we budgeted 110, but we only received 18? No, hundred. No, one eighteen. No, we budgeted oh, one eighteen. Sorry, we got, I didn't. We got didn't. in the current year a hundred and hundred eighteen. We okay, I heard you say eighteen. No, hundred eighteen. <laughs> so that would be scary. Yeah. Um, scary. Do you have any desire to bring that number down? Um, should we more be adjusting our? In, our tax, not taxes, our interest on accounts since our the unappropriated general fund, the money market, all those things, the interest that we receive went from 0.5 to 0.01, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. I mean, the, the tax interest rates have dropped. Are we being too generous with that line more than motor vehicle? And your, your question is good. We, uh, we budgeted in this budget, we assumed $35,000. Um, lower, we're up in the 40s right now, a little bit lower. The reason at the time, Angus and I thought that was conservative is that uh, we are growing our surplus so we would have more dollars in a, uh, an investment account. But it's a good question. I'm not, I want to point out, I'm not an expert in <clears throat> that yet, but um, I believe that the supplemental uh, uh, motor vehicles is not for this year, but it, but it so the new cars that were not that are not being sold and registered will not be affected by this budget, but will be by the, the next year because we're budgeting. That certainly that they will be a much more year. larger effect on last year's. Yeah, I think it will have a bigger effect on next year. Oh, yes, than on that is correct. Budget. Yeah, I think the hundred and ten is okay. I um, think so. Um, the the other one that is worthy of at least a, a comment is. Uh, we uh, we also assumed um, uncollected of uh, what one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We are currently at about one hundred and eighty of, uh, of um, uh, taxes in arrears that we collected. Um, does anyone have any thoughts that that number should be reduced? The prior year we got uh, one hundred sixty-five thousand in. So um, 
I don't know what to adjust it to is the problem. Um, while there may be uncertainty in the world, I just don't know where to take it other than arbitrarily reducing it, which only increases our shortfall someplace else. So does anyone else, have, does anyone have any appetite or thoughts that we should change any numbers? If not, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to keep them where they are. We should at least be aware that uh, we are exposed to those uncertainty, which is, is the, which puts, which is the importance of our surplus to handle these kinds of, which is the way I answered it the other night. Yeah. Um, let's get, let me, let me zero in on, we are going to send to, unless anyone wishes to change their mind, we are going to send to the, um, we are going to advertise and we are going to send to the annual, um, uh, annual town meeting, proposed, town proposed expenditures of 18,256,958 dollars, which is- I'm sorry, same. say that again, you just got garbled and I don't have it on this page. 18,256. <clears throat> dollars. That Thank is the you. same dollar amount that we sent to public hearing the other night. We will advertise those numbers in the local paper in the next couple of days, and they will be the numbers that you are going to vote on at the annual town meeting. Now, I, the reason I bring it up with some enthusiasm is at the public hearing, I discussed, well, let's go back, I discussed, period. And at our April meeting, with some enthusiasm that the we would potentially pursue borrowing a tax and note in July or August. Okay. Um, I'm not including either the dollar out of the borrowing or the interest rate in the budget that we will approve, the expenditure will approve uh, at the annual town meeting. I still think there is too much uncertainty on if we will do it, uh, and the dollar amount of what we will do and when we will do it. And I want to make sure that everyone agrees with that assumption. I believe, and Angus can jump in here, but I believe it is Angus and Angus is working with banks. Um, we will continue this conversation and maybe at our April, uh, at our May meeting, we will actually vote to proceed with that. But I don't think we have enough information, certainty, to put it into the uh, annual town expenditures. Can mm -hmm. I jump in for a sec? Yeah. Is, is, is it just like at any no. point? Okay, no. And who's this? No, that's, that's Tony Boldick. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we do not have an audience of citizens on our agenda tonight. So, Board of Finance, thoughts on whether you think the, uh, the anticipated borrowing should be in what you approve at the annual meeting? Should we um, continue to uh, watch? I, I you, you explained it pretty well, but as far as whether or not we know we're going to need it or not, yes. the whole effort for this really is to, and, and we will talk about it at our board of selectmen meeting and at our board of finance meeting, uh, our regular meetings coming up, because I, I think that it is, if we do need it, we're going to need it rather rapidly. Um, and we, we, we know right now that banks are losing their appetite for these loans because they are, um, they're they're getting requests they're getting bombarded with requests so while i don't uh want us to, to borrow the money right now i want us to get give ourselves authority to borrow that money not greater than a certain amount whatever that number is um in order for us to be able to borrow it when and if we need it um i think we rather than having you know learning that we need it in August and then not being able to get it until September, we uh, we're, at that point we're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, our our next regular meeting is the twenty sixth, right. and I thought we were adding that discussion that to that. under other business. Yeah. All right. Um, hearing no uh, resistance to the dollar amount that I were sending to the town meeting and advertising, I will move on to our next uh, item. Next item is at the with the expenditures we are uh, we are going to vote on, and the revenues that we are assuming that we get. There is a shortfall of approximately four hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars. 
Um, does anyone wish to start a conversation on how we uh, we should? Uh, no, is that? Do you folks have that in front of you? No, you don't. I need to. No. Yeah, I need to do a. Uh, I need do to bring screen that share. up for a screen share. <clears throat> There is a numbers that we have been looking at. Current mill rate is 29.42. Um, if we were to hold the mill rate or unchanged, we would face a 451, a zero to $1 shortfall. Does anyone wish to start a conversation on how we should fill that shortfall? Well, we have talked about going up 0.75. And I know some felt that that was too high. Um, I'm not in favor of taking out anywhere near even half of that. That's that's too much to take out of the unappropriated general fund just because the state, the federal government, they're all screaming about getting, for instance, the payroll protection plan. They're starting to say, hey, you're not using it properly. You're not use it, using it, hiring everybody back. We want the money back. So the government's looking for money, and I really feel the towns are not going to receive as much in what we would normally get. I mean, they've cut our education funding in the past mid-budget, you know, mid-year. Um, so I, I really hesitate to take too much out of unappropriated general fund. Well said. Anyone wish to uh, bring into that conversation? Court Laurie's thought? Um, just for discussion, oh, well, it is not accurate. Uh, John has suggested a 0.7 increase. No, 0.57. 0.57? Yeah. No, I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was, and I didn't think know. it was 0.57, which yeah. uh, keeps us under uh, the 30 mil rate, which. Uh, yeah, one, one of the considerations in all honesty is, I, I mean, I know it's a little bit of a psychological thing, but. Um, you know, I have some folks that do quite a bit of a uh, real estate business. And one of the things they said is like, people do look at the, at the, at the tax mill rates and when they're considering purchasing properties you know, amongst the towns. And, um, you know, I think once you start bumping that first number up, it catches people's eyes a lot quicker than it would otherwise. So like a, a 29.99 versus a, 30.05. I mean, marketers use that trick all the time, right? That's the way we buy gas. So uh, there it is. Just, that would require us to thought. take 165,804 out of our, uh, our surplus. And I remind you that uh, this form, which is the form we have been using, I do not believe the surplus to be accurate. I believe you should think about having a million nine maybe a million nine fifty as the surplus that we can use to fund the uh, shortfall we're looking at at the moment and that's at what percent of our total because i know we're supposed to be keeping it if we can between <coughs> 10 and 15 and that only brings us to 0.9 i don't remember uh let's see if i can do it for you if you're tolerant i'll grab that number and add this number in and to about nine and a half. Nine and a half. So that's still below what is recommended that the towns, all towns, have in their unappropriated general funds. That's correct. That's correct. Um, anyone else have any thoughts? We have... Uh, Anyone? How much do you want to protect the uh, mill rate? The uh, on the surplus. Is, uh, we should proceed the surplus to be uh, a somewhat. Hold on. Do I have that number right? Hold on. Yes, yes, yes. I do. I take the one hundred nine plus the uh, the shortfall. I'm sorry. I did. I did it right. Surprise. Um, anyway, uh, I, I'm okay doing it there. I, as much as no one wants to. Uh, uh, Raise of the mill rate. It's a fine thing to do to um, mitigate taking too much money out of our general fund. I agree. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's going to be a hard number for people anyways. I mean, I honestly, you know, but I don't, you know, I think we've cut every, you know, we just don't, we don't have access to the big dollars to cut. So um, I don't know what else, you know, and you're right. I, you know, I don't think we should take all the money out of our, our funds to pay it. So. I don't have any real problem. We've, we've built our fund up dramatically over the past four years and we've benefited by monies from the state that we did not anticipate. Um, so I, I don't have a real problem with that. Uh, and to, to not, it sounds like, you know, beating a dead horse, but it is not a normal year. No, it's and not. It, we're not operating normally. We're operating in abeyance of normal conditions. So Whatever we're doing this year, let's hope we're not doing it again next year. Let's hope next year gets us to a point of uh, even to normalcy um, where we can be um, a little bit more giving in our budget than we are. Um, I think the 299 mil rate is good. I think it's too low. I'm, I'm, I've identified as John, so I'm going to assume that John, I'm speaking for you uh, by that number. Uh, Bill, any thoughts? Too high? Too no, so I, actually, you well, are actually, actually the father of seven five. I want to go down to where John says, and I understand why he says it, and I totally agree with him. Because if you're trying to improve things in town and build the town, going in with a higher mill rate is not going to help doing that, as was just previously mentioned. Uh, it's just to go below 30 is not that big a difference where we are right this second. All right, look at, you, uh, you do not have this screen in front of you. I have, um, let me see. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard to see that, those numbers, bud. Can you make them any bigger? Let me see. I don't know. Let's see here. We don't want to make them any bigger. Was <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, Russell. Always park you wish to see. Is that That's bigger? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So. Uh, okay. Um, can I interject one thing? It was please. just brought to my attention that there's the potential the capping of that vehicle was done after the grant was applied for. Oh, all right. So it cost you more money. So it wasn't done two years ago, then. It was done more recently. It or was the grant applied for two years ago? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah it's about no. somewhere in. All right. Yeah. I thought everybody. Voted. Actually, no. I just done a calculation. If we raise the mill rate to uh, by the 0.57, I'm going to try and give you the in the effect it will have on taxes on the average house in Deep River, putting to I don't know Zillow or one of those real estate places. The average <clears throat> value of a market value of a house in Deep River is two hundred seventy-one thousand dollars. That same house had about uh, had uh, two cars, ten thousand each. Uh, there, this will bring about an increase in taxes to this average home of about one hundred sixteen thousand dollars. One hundred sixteen dollars. I'm sorry. Thousand dollars. We have ghost. I'm sorry. One hundred sixteen. Yes. Um, now I cannot resist this. There seems to be a uh, a movement towards um, the twenty nine nine nine. And What's that? Anyone is it? Does is there a bigger? Is there a compromise out there for those who are very concerned about providing tax relief this year? Would the, anyone be willing to enter into a compromise, reduce the increase this year to 0.35, take the difference out of the, uh, the surplus and bring, let the firemen bought, get their truck and we'll pay for it next year? Bullshit. Your compromise I can offer it to anyone. Uh, I'm not in favor of going down to 0.35. Absolutely no. Is he crazy? What you're doing is you, it's called kicking a can down the road. Come up with a better idea. What, what am I kicking okay, down the road? Who's, who's speaking? Uh, we're just trying to, uh, 
Make sure everyone's muted. That's all. Okay. Seems like a pretty big hit to the to the fund that is built up. You know, going doing that. Yeah, it 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 would indeed. If I went my three five, that's correct. Russ, what did you say? Yes or no? Take two seventy five out. Yeah, that's a big. That's a pretty big number. That is a pretty big number. No, I'm not in favor of that. Russ, what did you say? 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 uh, 1? I would say at a minimum, you have to go up to the 29.99. Um, if, if people want to go up further, they could. I, I, I'm not in favor of that, but, but you could. The thing, the thing that you're doing is when you take money out of the general fund, it's gone forever. And this is money that you put in there. And then next yeah. year, you may or may not have to do the same thing. By, if you look at taxes on a long-term basis over three, four, five years, you don't want to undervalue that. I mean, things just get more expensive. So, you know, I'm afraid to take money out of that general fund. And then we need money later on because we don't get a, something from the state or something happens or people can't pay their taxes. That's what that general fund is there for, is for that emergency exactly. That's, that's right. And this general fund, don't forget that this general fund is still, in, in the eyes of the state of Connecticut, <clears throat> five, points, five percentage points lower than it should be. We're at or near... 10 or 11 percent, we should be around 15 percent of our of our overall budget. So I'm um, I don't think this is a bad uh, compromise, if you will. Keeping five, it five seven I, five zero would be as low as I would like to go, just because it's an even number, and I like even numbers. But. If we're comfortable with the um, 2999. Seems to me that's where everyone seems to be comfortable. Have we done it? Have we reached a, have we reached the point of uh, we've gotten there? It's not across the Rubicon. There you go. And uh, that is an important, that is important. We left you crossing the Rubicon the other day. All right. Um, I mean, Russell, are you, uh, Russell, are you tolerant of this uh, you were my other negative vote last semester. Are you tolerant of these numbers? Well, I'm, I'm tolerant of the number. <laughs> I, I, I would go higher only if you're going to do something about a fire truck, but you're not going to in this budget, evidently. So um, in order to cover the taxes of the things that we, in order to cover the expense of the things that we know of, then this is a place to be. All right. It looks like we have uh, reached a, uh, a consensus. Yeah, we cannot vote on the mill rate at this point in time. It's just, nope. uh, you know, part of the general discussion. Um, you know, and there's, you know, the concern that the fire department isn't going to get the scuba equipment, but uh, we included that. It didn't wait. Oh, that's included. There's no yeah, included, included in included, our budget. So that's I'm not enough. concerned there. Okay. Yes. I mean, five, seven. It's not seven five, but I wouldn't. I would vote for the expenditures to be what they are at that amount, knowing how much would have to come out of the unappropriated general fund at that point. All right, Carmela, you were yes. Yep. All right. I like the enthusiasm. Uh, <laughs> and, um, uh, let us say, if we keep talking about it, who knows? There is a random thoughts that could pop in my. Let us. Well, at least that is, uh, I suggest that that is the number we will, the more suggest that is the number we're going to advertise. Angus, what we advertise, do we put the anticipated mill rate and the shortfall in that advertisement? I believe so, yeah. Okay, there, that is what we shall, we shall advertise. Here's my okay, next question. Okay, we quick. still need to vote on the expenditure amount to be presented at, oh, the, you, okay. at the special meeting of the board of finance on the 18th at 7 30 to vote on that amount and then vote on setting the mill rate because based on the state we cannot have a town meeting at that point in time so our special meeting will be at the same time just in case there's any further discussion but 
those two items will be the only thing. There will be nothing else voted on or discussed at that meeting other than to vote on the expenditure and vote on the mill rate. But we don't have to vote tonight to again send to change that to expenditures we're sending, correct? Um, yeah, the call and meeting is to vote on the expenditure. So I think we should re-vote on the expenditure amount because. All right, let's do that. Uh, and yeah. it's only the expenditure we are going to vote on. All right. Does anyone wish to free, uh, put forth a, um, a resolution on what we shall take to the town for the annual meeting? Dollar amounts. I'll make the motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All, Thank you. All those in favor of sending to the uh, town meeting for a vote by the Board of Finance would be $18,256,938. Aye. 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 Thank you. Good. The only mm -hmm. open, at least I perceive to be open, at that annual meeting, we will be required to vote um, that will be a public Zoom meeting. Do you wish to have a, another present? I can do another presentation. Generally we do, and generally it's shorter. Do you wish to have, as we have in the auditorium, comments from the public? Anyone have thoughts? It's not gonna be an annual meeting. You wish to have what? I couldn't hear you. At the, why do you not call it an annual meeting? Because it's not Cause going it's to not be an a, annual meeting. We're not allowed to have meeting. an annual it, meeting. We're having a special town meeting. A special, a special board town of meeting. finance it meeting. Loses, it loses yeah. its annual town meeting designation because... Uh, yes. We're yep. doing, okay. All right. Special so, meeting of the Board of Finance. All right. Um, and although we have, uh, just to keep my uh, momentum going, we have attempted to say to citizens, we're going to keep this as close to what they are used to. But nonetheless, that's true. want to make a me to make a presentation to the Zoom or via yep. Zoom, and should we allow questions at that meeting before our vote? We certainly can. That's that's up to you guys. It is up to us. Um, I don't. I I I don't. Uh, I was it, was useful, we... it was useful before because people were going to vote at that meeting. That's right. Yeah. We we are the voters this time. Um, thoughts. Right. They're not going to vote. They've had an opportunity to express their feelings, pro or con. And everyone understands that there's not going to be a town vote for the budget. It's up to the finance committee to do the vote and to set the mill rate. So yes. having all these questions, I think, is kind of mute at this point. I've spoken to I've spoken to other towns that have already gone through this process and they did not have any conversation after their um after their yeah it doesn't seem to serve any purpose I, i'm not 100 percent in favor of that but it is it is what most of the other municipalities around us have done mm -hmm. it's an odd year yeah. it's an odd year um i guess i'd like to at least say people should have as much opportunity to participate as they want but it's a uh, rather romantic isn't it John, any thoughts? You wish participation? Nay. Nay or yay. I, I think it's moot. So, um, and normally I'm, I'm all for open, you know, discussion and discourse regarding these kind of things. Okay. But in this instance, um, it's not really, a, <laughs> you hate to say this, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's up to us to decide. So. That is correct. All right. right. Russell, Laurie, you, uh, you agree with that conclusion so far? Yes. Right. Yes. Russell, all right. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's it's what the state is telling us to do. We, yeah, right. And that's the other part. Right? Telling yeah. us. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Time. These aren't these are not our rules. <laughs> no. Okay. And okay. I don't know that we even need a presentation again. Though these are the numbers we've been staring at them. Even at three in the morning, we get up and look at them and review them. Um, I think that's a singular we, by the way, but yes, uh, <laughs> I right, want sorry. you to think we're meeting, uh, having people think we meet. No, but I'm, I'm d up in the night thinking about it. Torturing we just myself. voted on our expenditures, didn't we? We voted to send we the did. expenditures to the so special, special meeting. Special meeting. 
I sort of seems like we're done. Well, we didn't set the mill rate yet. No, you didn't long. set the mill no, rate. And you, did not, you did not just, adopt the budget. That's right. this is. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we will do that on the 18th. It's in, in lieu of sending it to a town meeting, which is not how it works this particular year. Right. Mm -hmm. Send it right. to to be decided at a at a slightly later date. Um, I I also would add that I hope that next year at this time we're sitting here, there is no pandemic and there is a town meeting in the normal way that we are used to, and that we can. Yeah. I think we all hope, that, Russell. I think everybody hopes Absolutely. that everybody participation. This is a tremendous burden to be placed on six people that the whole yes. town can't express a vote on. Correct. Correct. The only, the only, I don't want to say positive because it's not a positive, but the, the, the only con, con, I think the con, condolence maybe that, that throws at that, or I don't know the right word for it, but the only, the only positive that I can get out of that is that you were all elected to do what you think is best for this town. Um, and as, in particular for how this town's money is spent. And, um, and we have to take, take some solace in, in that you are making the decisions um, that you think are the right decisions. And you were elected to do exactly that. And I think I know I know how much work has gone into this. I know how much effort you you've all put into it. And uh, whether it, whether it pleases everyone or not, um, uh, it, it's it's where we are. It's as we and we don't have a whole lot of choice. And I think I think before we put out the agenda, we can maybe think a little bit more about whether or not we allow for uh, for public discussion prior to the prior to the meeting. The, the only thing here is that everyone in the town has had access to all of the workshops in a greater capacity. Um, they don't have to leave their home to come to a workshop. So we have seen people on our Zoom workshops where they've had the ability to bring their, their thoughts forward. I've walked down the sidewalk and been stopped by any number of people putting their opinions forward. Um, you're receiving phone calls, Angus, you know, we're all getting everywhere we go. People in the town are expressing their opinions and those are helping us to form our op opinion of what is best for the town mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. So for people to say that we're not allowing them to vote their opinion. No, they have had the ability to express their opinion to every one of us. Um, I don't so I'm think there's, I don't, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that people understand the situation that the town is in. Um, <laughs> people you know. don't wear their masks properly. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, I don't know, we, we are where we are. We're doing our best. And I, I yeah. think that there might be some, some it might be, uh, folks might feel a little bit more involved if we were able to give them an opportunity to speak. A, a little bit more, just like we normally do. Uh, to Bud's point, just like we normally do, we have we we, have, we do a, an abbreviated uh, presentation this is a and, and allow for an abbreviated conversation prior to the vote. Yeah, these are not normal times. Um, to those that are looking for a specific expenditure to be included in the budget. This isn't the last budget we're ever going to address and something comes up where just like the school they get for instance hate to put it on the students but they get a special needs student in that causes them to have to raise you know support this child by getting them special wheelchair whatever you know and they come to us and say hey this is why we need money and this is how much we need we've listened Every single, every single time somebody comes to us with an, a special need, mm -hmm. whether it's a fire truck or whatever, we always listen. Yeah. So this is not the last time we're going to address the truck or any of the vehicles, such as a constable's no, vehicle. It's my, my hope that we were talking about this truck very soon. soon. And, and I'd like to have a building with that as well. 
personally. All right, everyone, I need a, a recommendation from you to adjourn. So I move. move that we adjourn. All right, we we'll spoke first. All at once, we got a first and second, and who we're all saying first? yeah. I don't know who spoke uh, first. I think it was John and Carmel. Okay. Actually, some people were voting yay before we even got the motion. <laughs> all, right. all those in favor of adjourning, and we will see you at the, at the 18th is when we'll see everyone next. No what are we going to do with ourselves next Tuesday? <laughs> all right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.